Hello, I'm Earl Gibbs and welcome to Speaking of Everything. When I come back, you're going to meet my guest. She is one hell of a lady. You'll meet her when I come back right here on Earl Gibbs Live. I mean, Speaking of Everything, let me tell you about the sponsors. So, Windmill Islands Bank in three locations, Phillipsburg, Cul-de-Sac, and in Simpson Bay. The Windmill Islands Bank for all your banking needs. It's the Windmill Islands Bank. And GEBE, -E, or local water and electricity company. GEBE, -E, serving St. Martin for over six decades, is GEBE. -E, and I'm all gives it with you. And I have none other than Ms. Claire Elshel. How are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you, Oral. And thank you for having me. And I would like to say greetings also to your listeners and your followers. And viewers too. And viewers, viewers yes. But thank you for coming. And uh, you're looking cool. I love you. the combination of your colors. Man. You're already dressed for the season. <laughs> yes, this is the season. Uh, yes, thank yeah. you. So um, how are things going in the union world? Because you were president of the uh, teachers' union, right? Yes. And you saw for the longest in the history. Yeah, 27 years, 27 and a half years, more or less. And then the, the, there's also this other um, union. Of the Umbrella Organization, right. yeah. which is the Windward Island Chamber of Labor Union. And I have been the chair for the last, um, I believe, five to six years now. Mm -hmm. And this it's a rotating chair, but what happened actually when it was the turn of the president mm -hmm. of the St. Martin Communication Union, he um, passed it on to me. But I feel that at this present time, since I'm no longer a president mm -hmm. of a, one of the mm -hmm. unions affiliated to the chamber, mm -hmm. that I should also give up the chair. And I did so by tendering my resignation, but then a motion was passed, and I am now still in that capacity chair of the chamber because the restructuring process will bring about a new face and a new chair for the coming year, so 2023. So in the meantime, I would still be the voice of the Chamber of Labor Unions. So That's good. here we are. <laughs> so I um, understand there's some good news right now for the workers, right? Are you happy with the news? Oh, did you say? Well, to be quite honest with you, mm -hmm. the news is that the Minister of Labor, the Honorable Otmar, Omar, sorry, Omar Otley, has in his interview said that as of January 2023, there would be an increase in the minimum wage. Okay, so the minimum wage, which was eight guilders and 84 cents for the hour, will now become um, uh, nine guilders and 95 cents, so less than 10 guilders. Now, for the 40 hour work week, if you check it like that, it would be then. 1723 guilders and 34 cents you're asking me if i'm happy um mixed feelings mm -hmm. it is long overdue this uh, increase because now we are talking about a one-time cumulative um, assessment for the years 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2021. So basically, um, they indicate, or he indicated, that the former Minister of Labor, Pamela Gordon, um, indexed the minimum wage of 2020 by adding one cent to the minimum wage for that year. Now, do you don't think that is ludicrous? One cent you got to add, and this minister is going to consider that 2020 was indexed? Mm -hmm. um, in any case, why would the minister, to the question that arises by me, why would the minister only index with one cent the 2020 while 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2019 was outstanding. Why did she skip those years? What kind of advice did she got that she only did one cent? You know what is one cent? 
um, people, viewers, one cent is one red cent. And today, the Honorable Minister, of course, did a lot of work according to him because the Sir gave advice. It took so long, this back and forth. But the fact of the matter, for us in labor, mm. this is still sad. Why? Because the minimum wage is not a living wage. With the prices and the price index, who can be happy when you go to the shop, especially on goods, you know, to food right. items, rent, and all other things. You know how many times gasoline went up in that year or in the span of the years. And if it goes up uh, five times, it would go down one time. And then within the next week, it gone up twice again. This is just something that we cannot. Even, I, I'm not bashing, but the reality, even the price of bread went up. And we know that before time, it's a permission had to be gained from the economic affairs and it would be published, the weight of the bread, etc. All of that went out of the door. Why? We don't know. The point of the matter that I'm making is that as labor, we feel it is time that we focus on a living wage for the workers and not a minimum wage that still cannot take care of households, especially the working class and their household, okay? So um, when we look at that aspect, that's why I said it is a mixed feeling. Finally, something is coming true, but it is stopping at 2021. And then um, the minister also said that he intends to use the quarterly CPI to do that such indexation in the future as long as he's a minister. But the, the sad part is every time we change a minister and a new minister come in, something else comes out or rolls out. Because um, for years we were custom of the Bureau of Statistics would be provide that um, price index. And from that, you would get the salaries in the private sector and the public sector. So even the civil servants and teachers would get their index. Now for them, mm. it has been a struggle because from since 2012. So if you see the minister did an index to the salaries of the minimum wage from 2016, civil servants on this island and teachers have not received a cost of living adjustment or an index to their salary. So what does this do for your purchasing power? It, be, it means that you go down, 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 you can purchase less for the amount of money that you are making. So we are looking still towards poverty minimum wage poverty minimum wage so the question that i would pose today boldly would be when would the salaries for the teachers and the civil servants which is the public sector be indexed the 12 and a half percent should be out of the door when would those benefits be indexed why would the serve the civil servants and teachers have to wait until 2024 for a next um, election bribe or ploy or promise the comfort to fools it's a promise eh? I heard the old people saying that a promise is a comfort to the fool so tell 2024 why not no no is when the purchasing power of every individual has dwindled they need to be able to take care of their families because some people just isn't fortunate to be able to qualify for social aid, you know, once you're working. But if your purchasing power has dwindled, what does that mean? You are running in financial problems. Now, this is the part of the concern, the worrisome part that I, as a trade unionist, have with this whole development. And in addition, 
there is a law that would state that all social premiums, so like old age pension, widow's pension, and orphanage pension should be indexed also by the 1st of January of every year. So then the recipients of those type of pensions would see that in their payment by the 28th, as he claimed that every 28th, it has to be paid out now by the 28th of the month, they would see that. Why is no announcement has been made? Because um, last year it was not done and no announcement has been made now pertaining to those premiums, the social premiums of widows, pensioners, etc. And let's be real, you know how many pensioners that are collecting below the maximum pension that has to be paid out. The maximum pension to date is 1,200 guilders. That's the maximum old age pension, which if you now compare with the minimum wage, it is far below the minimum wage, 500 and odd difference, if I can do the calculation quickly. Yeah. You know, 530 something guilders difference. And that 530 something, roughly, I would say that's about $400. Do, do they have any plans to increase that? But this is it. There's the law that states that it should be indexed yearly with using the same um, index Almost, yeah. from the S B Bureau of Statistics. Mm. So, therefore, um, the Bureau of Statistics diligently collects their data during the year. If his intention is to use the third quarter, then the third quarter should be used across the board, not only at minimum wage, but also with the pensions. And then another hiccup, there, uh, there has been a change of, whether you call it software or hardware, at the SFV for the processing of pensions. And I know a number of persons that have requested widow's pension because their spouse passed away. And up to today, there they are people waiting over a year, which wow. is not good. And the orphanage and half orphanage, mm -hmm. the same thing. When a parent passed away and a child is um, a minor, they are entitled to a uh, orphanage or half orphanage pension, those persons are still waiting for this to be processed after their request was entered after COVID, mm -hmm. when they changed their soft or their hardware or whatever. It is not a good thing. Um, telling the, the recipients or the persons that are entitled, mm -hmm. oh, you're going to get it retroactive. Yeah, that's not the question, if my husband pass away, I need, uh, it means that I, I, I am not getting the full income to take care of the household anymore because I had a husband, it was husband and wife's income that would take care of the, the household, right. you know? And it is leaving a lot of people in a desperate situation. And it is not good. And there's no apology that could continue to fix this problem. So I hope that when this program is aired, that all who are in charge at the entity of SFV that is responsible for the payment of these patients, that they too um, organize themselves and make it happen for those persons. So here you have, you know, um, the seniors on St. Martin are really suffering. But I did know that almost 80% of those people eligible for that pension can't even vote. And if that's the case, no wonder what politicians have no respect for them. But um, it is not that whether they could vote yes or not, or all because the way how it is calculated is based on a formula that you have to be registered from age 15, you understand? Yeah. and about 80% of those persons were not registered at age um, 15. And it's a weird type of, of um, But they can't vote either because I, I had um, your, one of your colleagues here last two weeks ago, and he said 80% of them just can't vote. Yes, what you're saying is true in terms yes. of the, the years calculated living on St. Martin, 
but they're also not even Dutch citizens, so they can't even vote. But you see, that is where people lack information because from the time you have lived here, you are registered, you have work here, uh, even if you register when you was no. at age 30 or 40 and was in the I labor know, force. The point, the point I'm trying to make is that, yes. the, that the politicians don't respect you because, hey, you have this large number of people, but they, they have no influence on, on me getting elected, so I don't, I don't care, and yeah. I think that's but wrong. But moral, the point I'm trying to yeah. make to is that those persons are entitled I agree to with you. go and get their I self agree. sorted out. If you live in here, go as a senior, go to the governor's cabinet, make an appointment, and get your Dutch nationality by option. Once you're senior, the younger people would have to do, or those in the workforce would have to do an exam right. and where their knowledge of Dutch, English, social right. studies, etc., would come. But a lot of people sit down and they are in this country, but they don't have the nationality because if you go and you get your nationality by option, you would be able to vote. Exactly. And you then, understand? And then they'll listen to you more. Exactly. You would be able. So then I uh, need to put this out too so that some people would just get off their hind leg once they reach the age 60, 61, 62 and start the process. If you have your permanent residency, a lot of people, once they have their permanent residency, they go into comfort zone yeah. and they have worked and contributed in this country. So with your permanent residency, do what you have to do so that your voice can also, because even though they um, cannot vote, they have to pay taxes. Exactly. They are and paying taxes. They have contributed while being part of the working class. So that is really the 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 point that I want to make. Right. I understand clearly what you're saying about the politician, but I want to put the responsibility now on the individual because if 80% is like I that, agree. and if let's say even if it's 70% of that 80% get up and would do what they have to do, then they can't depend on me, but they have to do it for themselves, yeah. then they, it would make a bigger cluster and a bigger impact because you cannot, you can't imagine persons living off of 600 and 800 and odd guilders. Some less than for, that. Uh, less, than less than that. that. You know, because yeah. it is calculated based on this crazy formula and I feel um, definitely that they know at the pension fund who is getting because, okay, enough people getting that, but they have a, a secondary pension. If this is the one and only pension that a person is getting, they know who all gets, let's say, as a civil servant, that you will get mm -hmm. an APS pension. They, they know that. Then just you can make an amendment to fix for those that are getting less than whether it is social aid then you have to give them less than the minimum wage so that they can have a living pension because a minimum wage earner still has the possibility that they could work two jobs i am not promoting that because i'm still saying a person need to have a certain amount of working hours a certain mm -hmm. amount of rest hours etc and family hours you need to be able to take care of your kids the tv should not be the thing to take care of the homework and the kids yeah. of of your kids so i am not promoting actually a, a single uh, uh, a second job actually to make ends meet. What I'm promoting is a living wage. And I believe the pensioners should also have that opportunity of having a living wage because if it is here you're living, here you have to be able to survive. But you know, uh, let's go back. The politicians, they're not stupid. They know. They know the numbers. They know where the importance are. and, and I always wonder why they overlook the seniors, not realizing th that there's this huge number of seniors that just can't vote. Well, 
And to tell you the gospel truth, mm. uh, some of the politicians overlooked their own selves when it came to, to when it came to their <laughs> to their pension. I don't want to make it sound uh, too dramatic, but they uh. overlooked their own selves because they were busy doing other things exactly. and other things <laughs> with um that begins with P, <laughs> but not pension, uh -huh. making sure that their pension is in line mm. so that when they reach the pension age and they bow out, that they can be taken, they can take care mm. of their needs also. I, I have to go to a quick break. Yes. When we come yeah. back, we're going to continue to speak with Ms. Claire Elshot right here on Oral, I'm speaking of everything, please do this. to know what you want out of life you need to observe listen and try it yourself mm. promises promises we can make it if we work together that's just how it is let's stand strong Ooh, and serve the land Ooh. working hard as one nation yes we can to achieve, the more satisfying it is to make it. Just believe in us, we'll see you true it all. Oh, 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 never give up. Oh, never give up. We can make it. Oh, 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 oh. Never forget those who were there for you. And if you dream big, you might just achieve it. Make use of web mobile banking with easy access and direct usage of face recognition. Pen code. Or fingerprint. Download web mobile banking app and make your transaction from anywhere at any time. For more information, visit web-bank.net forward slash. My guest on the program is uh, Claire Elshot. She's president of the Chamber of Unions here in St. Martin. May I speak to her? Minimum wage, pension, you know, it, it's like forever. It never goes away. It never gets correctly um, done. You know, I wonder what's next. Well, this is the whole thing because um, that social development you really need the political will to have that corrected. And over the years, we have had great um, union leaders mm -hmm. that have fought and was very successful in getting the pressure on and getting things done. Yeah. Um, so it behooves us now to step up to the plate. And in saying that, I would like to also mention that we lost um, one of the great union leaders on Curacao, Hubert Bebe Royer. Mm. Um, most people must have known him because he was um, affiliated to the APFO, which St. Martin also right. had a, a branch, have, has a branch. So um, he has been also a very dynamic leader for years in Curacao and championing these cause. So condolences to the whole Apfo family and his family and the persons, um, you know, left the moon, his loss. And basically, it is to show you that within the history that um, uh, the ILO has been around for over 100 years from 1919, and they have, um, be, they came out with a number of conventions and recommendations mm. to protect the rights of the workers, but it doesn't stop there. It shows you that there's still work to be done, and 
for the trade unions is very relevant today to have the voice and to open you know their mouths in defense of the working class because a lot of uh, workers today uh, are sometimes too reluctant to dry, join a union and think that everything would fall in place automatically but the best advice that I could give after being the president of a union for 27 years is be wise and unionize because as workers that is the force behind the unions the unions would be able to carry the the strength of any de change and decision in the power of what is behind them their membership but, but on the Dutch side it's so difficult because you have to have a referendum and you got to have 51 percent of the workers to get representation you go across the border the French side it's not the same no, I one know person that. can join a union. The union yes and um, the WIFL has also opened that opportunity mm -hmm. and try to have um, individual members joining the union um, for the teachers union we don't have to do an, uh, a referendum we just all the members can have to do is to sign a membership form we would send it then to their employer and the Jews would be deducted the Jews are minimum Jews all over the world right now. Jews for being members of union is 1% of your gross salary. So, but for us, it is sometimes uh, some unions are 20 guilders and 25 guilders, which means there should not be an excuse for the working class not to be represented, whether you are a civil servant, a teacher, or you're working in the private sector, you know, because it still consistently becomes united we stand, divided we fall. Right. And basically, when the unity is strength, when that unity comes up on the table, the politicians would listen. Oh yeah, definitely. you know one of the things though. With I don't the, have much time remaining. Just yeah, feel. one of the things with the seniors is that they have a number of associations, mm -hmm. but they are more recreational. They have to get a more organized union type for the seniors. So therefore, that too can have the impact. But as consumers coalition an anti-poverty platform where I'm also the co-coordinator in that platform. We have been speaking out on behalf of the seniors. Well, we, we have a time and I hope that we can see you again in 2023 because although you will be out of the union, I think you have a lot to offer. Yes, I'm still advisor mm -hmm. in the Windward Islands Teachers Union. And of course, I don't believe that that role would change also within the Chamber of Labor Unions. All right. So the again, advisory role. Eh? Always good having you. Hope we have you back soon again. All right. Thank you for having me and be good. Thank you and all the best. Yes. And that's it for now. I'll see you next time right here on Speaking of Everything. Till then, take care. Bye.